Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Before we get started, we want to share one of our very special P.O. Box gifts that we've received. Yeah, this is, um, I mean, every gift we get is special, so please don't take that the wrong way. But this one, um, well, extra special. So this is from our dear friend and patron, Helen, and she sent this to us, and it's just the coolest thing, guys. So, so amazing. Here we go. Wow. It's a Holy Bible Coronation Edition, mm -hmm. 2023. How cool is this? And, you know, if you don't know, you know, it's got the different pictures and stuff inside. Um, coronation chair, Westminster Abbey photos. And then, uh, let's see here. If I can get to the right page. It's This is just the neatest thing to me. Um, you know, we, we're God-loving ladies. And I was sent a Welsh Bible over. Uh-huh. Um, beginning of this year or into last year. And I cherish that. So anything like this is just like the coolest thing. I can't find the spot. Oh, here it is. And we feel extra special. We're probably the only Americans yeah. to have this. I concur. I mean, this is just like the coolest thing ever. So, Helen, thank you again so much. We sincerely appreciate it um, more than you can even know. Yes, so. we do. Um, so we're taking a look at um, some different important people throughout history. Yeah. Uh, trying to focus on different areas, people that maybe we don't know. Maybe you do know. Hopefully you do. Yeah, um, and we went on Facebook. We asked people, what are some of your favorite British people? And, you know, mm -hmm. give us a list. And so we've gotten quite an extensive list now, quite a few we know about. Um, but it's not alcohol in case anyone's worrying. Um, but there's a lot of that we don't. And this person's name came up quite a bit. Yes. And so we thought, you know, this is a good time. Um, we know nothing about him. I did listen to the first couple seconds of this video to hear the pronunciation uh -huh. of his last name so I wouldn't mess it up. So what are we watching today, Debs? Or learning about? <laughs> uh, the legless ace. True story of Douglas Botter. Yeah. Famous RAF fighter pilot. That's it. That's all we know. No, nothing else. Yeah. I, I want to get in uh, and learn his story and find out what made him such a, a hero. The legless ace. Okay. So intrigued, interested, and of course, military. We you know we love our military. Mm -hmm. um, we love the allied military. So thank you for your service, anyone watching, veteran or active duty. So without any further ado, let's find out the story of the legless ace, true story of Douglas Botter, famous RAF fighter pilot. Coming up. The legendary aces of World War II were certainly some of the most incredible men in the history of modern warfare. Great. But one man in particular outshines the others due to the incredible adversity that he was forced to overcome. After losing his legs in a flight accident, Douglas Bader would become one of the most famous pilots in the history of the Royal Air Force. Mm. In this video, we will dive into the famous story of the man who, despite his disability, shot down over 20 German aircraft oh, wow. and became an icon among his fellow RAF pilots. In addition, we will relive his final mission where his Spitfire was cut in half, no. forcing him to bail out over German territory and the unusual experience as a POW that would follow. What? Wow. Enjoy. I think that's the wrong word. Sir Douglas Bader was born in London in 1910. He would join the RAF at the Royal Air Force College and in 1929 was commissioned as a pilot officer in the 23 squadron of the RAF in Kinley. Good looking guy. He began to earn a reputation as a daredevil during his training, typically flying biplanes that were fast for the time but had directional stability problems for the kind of stunts that Bader would perform. Oh. The higher-ups enforced strict rules that forbade unauthorized aerobatics of any kind below 2,000 feet, which he frequently ignored. Yeah. Bada's early years as a pilot were marked with success. He defended his unit's title for the Hendon Air Show Pairs event and won the 1931 title with Harry Day. Eager to win it again the following year, he began to train for the next show, but tragedy would soon strike. Mm. On December 14th of 1931, he attempted a low-flying move, allegedly on a dare. 
As his plane dove to the ground for an aerobatic maneuver, the tip of the left wing teetered too close and made contact with the earth. Oh, no. The plane violently oh. crashed and Botter received severe and horrible injuries. Ah. Oh, okay, that's... Mm. Ooh. Never like seeing stuff like that. It's one thing being a daredevil, but then you you definitely run that risk of way more accidents. Yeah. So obviously we know that his story continues from here. Well, this is probably the whole where he lost his legs, I'm assuming. Sad. He was rushed to the Royal Berkshire Hospital, where both of his legs were amputated. Mm. The next few months of his recovery were excruciating and painful for Bada, as he pushed through, determined to regain the abilities that he had before the accident. Rockstar. He was fitted with prosthetic legs, and after being transferred nice. to a new hospital, he continued to work hard at his recovery, eventually being able to drive a modified car, play golf, and even dance. Rock and wow. Months later, after hard work and training, Bada believed that he was ready to fly again. After proving his fitness for the air, he hoped to be allowed back to the RAF as a- Well, hold on, hold on. Let's just take a minute and give the guy some freaking respect for what he already did. Forget about getting back into the RAF already. I know. Holy crap. <laughs> exactly. You to know? be able to walk, drive a car, play dance. Golf. Yes. That's amazing. That is so much um, just insanely hard dedication and work. It to... definitely shows his spirit, his it, character. Yeah. Like he's not giving up. Exactly. Nothing's going to take him down. So, yeah, you put him in World War II. <laughs> I don't want to be on the other side of this, <laughs> exactly. of this of this gentleman. Okay, wow. I'm, I'm just absolutely impressed. Just rewind that back a little bit. Dance. Months later, after hard work and training, Bada believed that he was ready to fly again. After proving his fitness for the air, he hoped to be allowed back to the RAF as a service pilot. Don't not to but take him. to his dismay, he was rejected due to his physical disability. Wow. When tensions in Europe began to rise in the late 1930s, the need for fighter pilots was becoming more and more clear. After a personal endorsement from Air Vice Marshal Hollihan, Bada was eventually invited to report for flying test on mm. October 14th of 1939. His grit and willpower pushed him to okay. succeed so that in November, mm -hmm. nearly eight years after his accident, well, he flew it. solo again and even turned the biplane upside down at only 600 feet in the air. What? He continued on Figured through his nuts. courses, advancing to the final stage before he'd be permitted to fly Spitfires and Hurricanes. Mm -hmm. The following January, Bada was posted to number 19 squadron at RAF Duxford near Cambridge. Although he was a bit older than the other pilots in his unit, he experienced a stunning amount of success that was actually actually credited to his legs being amputated. Really? When pilots experienced the high G-forces of aerial combat, the blood was believed to drain away from the brain and other parts of the body, <sighs> usually causing them to pass out. Yeah. Since he did not have legs, it was thought that he was able to remain conscious longer and true? thus have an edge sense? over his able-bodied opponents. Really? Over the next few months, Bada practiced flying in formation and other air tactics, often performing patrols over convoys at sea. He was eventually appointed to a flight commander in the 222nd Squadron of the RAF and experienced his first combat shortly after. On June of 1940, Bado was patrolling near the coast of Dunkirk, around 3,000 feet okay. in the air, where he discovered a Messerschmitt BF-109 going in the same direction. Bader destroyed the plane by launching several bursts of gunfire, shooting it down for his first aerial victory. Jeez. He suspected that it was a novice pilot due to the fact that it did little to maneuver, even though it was being fired upon. Huh. Mm -hmm. On his next patrol, just four days later, he also received credit for damaging an HE-111. After the operations in Dunkirk were over, Bada was moved to number 242 squadron of the RAF as their squadron leader, now flying Hawker Hurricanes. The primarily Canadian squadron resisted him as their leader, due in part mm. to the low morale that they were experiencing after suffering high casualties in the Battle of France. Mm. But Bada eventually wore them down with his attitude and tenacity, and soon after, the squadron was back in top shape, becoming fully operational on July 9th of 1940, the day before the Battle of Britain began. Bader and his squadron wow. received their first victory on July 11th after gunning down a twin-engine German plane. He spotted the aircraft from about 600 yards away in dense clouds and closed the gap to 250 yards, There's a wow. firing two bursts into the aircraft and sending it crashing into the sea. Crap, man. On August 17th, Bada replicated the battle with another German aircraft, this time sending it into the waters near Great Yarmouth. Both casualties were confirmed by Royal Observer Corps on the ground, and neither of the enemy's planes had any survivors. 
Yeah, I would not have wanted to been in the air and have him anywhere find near. Me. <laughs> yeah, this guy is insanely heroic and crazy cool at the same time. Yeah. Like, you know, he brings morale from the Canadian side up. He's just yep. like determined to like to motivate him, turn stuff around, and come on. Well, and who's better, better to do butt. that? Exactly. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I am not good when I have physical issues. I'm. She knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he's just like seeing things through clouds that no one else could even see. It's uh -huh. just insanely cool. Wow, what an amazing guy. No wonder when said he was. So many people had him as their fa favorite. Him, yeah. Favorite um, Brett. Really. Yeah. Later that month, he scored two more victories after besting Messerschmitt Bf 110s. Bada's squadron was eventually moved to Duxford again on August 30th, right to where the fighting was heavy. Mm. There, the squadron claimed 10 more enemy aircraft victories, Bada taking two for himself against 110s and becoming an ace. Huh. A week later on September 7th, he was nearly forced to bail out of his plane after Ooh. he was badly hit by a Messerschmitt Bf 109. But he was able to maintain control and recover the hurricane. Wow. It's kind of amazing. Over the next few weeks, he and his team claimed multiple victories, and he was even awarded the Distinguished Service Order for his combat leadership. Mm -hmm. Throughout the Battle of Britain, Bada earned around 11 victories in his Hawker Hurricane. Nice. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his services, and his squadron claimed 62 victories in total. Well, he was promoted to Acting Wing Commander and Wing Leader on March 18th of 1941. Awesome. Over the course of summer of that year, Bada flew 62 fighter sweeps over German-occupied France. Jeez. This guy is really in On it. August 9th, Bada flew a Spitfire Mark V on an offensive patrol over the French coast, alone as his trusted wingman, Alan Smith, was sick with a head cold. What? During the course of this mission, Hello? he was separated from the fighter group that he was with. He was deciding whether or not to return to base when he spotted three pairs of German BF-109s a few that? miles ahead of him. Never one to turn away from action, he dropped in on the group, letting loose a burst of deadly gunfire Dude. on the aircraft. He took down one of the German 109s on his initial dive for what would actually be his final aerial victory. Uh -oh. He turned and was considering if he should attack another when he saw two of them turning towards him oh. on his left. He was outnumbered and it was time to go home. What he started to bank away from them when suddenly his fuselage, tail, and fin seemed to vanish in an instant. What? Most historians believe that he collided with a German aircraft. Oh, his plane wow. began falling at a rapid rate later estimated to be around 400 miles an hour in a slow death spiral. Please tell me he was in the high. Well, wow. they just said historians think so. Right. Or maybe he didn't see it and that's, mm, mm. don't want this to end like this. Really don't. 400 miles an hour. Yeah, no, this guy's amazing. Believe that he collided with a German aircraft. His plane began falling at a rapid rate, later estimated to be around 400 miles an hour <sighs> in a slow death spiral. No, he opened the cockpit's canopy and released the harness pin but could not break free. No. His right prosthetic leg was trapped inside. No. In a last ditch effort, he pulled the tab on his parachute and was launched into the air, causing his right leg's straps to be snapped from the force. He was oh, probably wow. captured by German forces oh, that's right. they who treated him. the RAF pilot with a shocking amount of respect. After arriving at a hospital, Bob. So I see a minute. I didn't remember at the beginning when they said that. Yeah, I was, that he was POW. Just yeah. so in the moment. Whew. Whew. Okay. Oh, man. What? And he got out of that? Holy crap. Yeah. He had some That's angels watching incredible. over him, I'll tell you. But I don't know where this is going, so no one wants to be a POW. But did they just no. say that they treated him with high respect? I thought that's what they said. Let's go back and find out. Winding that. Yeah. Straps to be snapped from the force. He was promptly captured by German forces, who treated the RAF pilot with a shocking amount of respect. Mm -hmm. After arriving at a hospital, Bada was invited to visit an airfield by Adolf Galland, a prominent German air ace who had also been involved in the Battle of Britain. Huh. Still missing one leg, he was treated with great respect by Galland and was even allowed to sit in the cockpit of his personal 109. Wow. Bada cheekily okay. asked him if there was any chance of Beer. him taking the plane for a spin, but unsurprisingly, <laughs> Galland politely <laughs> refused his request. Okay, just hang on a minute. Yes. <laughs> he asked the German oh, yeah, if he could take his... That dude is epic. This I'm guy is a freaking hero. A, a spin real quick. This guy is an epic hero. Promise I'll be back in three minutes. I'll be right back. I'm not going to just completely destroy this entire airfield and everyone All on right. it and just win the war single-handedly. Oh my gosh, what if they had said yes? That's... 
This guy is a rock star. Oh, He's a man. freaking rock star. I want to hear that again. 109. <laughs> Bada cheekily asked him if there was any chance of him taking the plane for a spin, but unsurprisingly, uh. Gallon politely refused his request. <laughs> he formed a friendly relationship with Adolf Gallon, who notified the British forces about Bada's leg. He would also ensure a safe passage to drop a new prosthetic Stop. leg by parachute over a nearby base in France. Wow. The two would not cross paths again until later in 1945 when Gallen, Gunther Rahl, and Hans Rudel were taken to RAF Tangmir as POWs. Okay. According wow. to one of the pilots there, Bada ensured that Rudel, a fellow amputee, was given an artificial leg. Aww. Despite their kindness, nice. Bada was not one to accept being a prisoner. Well, Throughout yeah. the rest of his time as a prisoner, he tried to escape so many times that the Germans threatened to take away his leg. Shut up! After several more escape attempts, on August 18th of 1942, he was placed in Kolditz Castle, a location that was believed to be escape proof. <laughs> he would remain here until it was liberated on April 15th of 1945 by the first United States Army. Once Bada returned yeah. to- Yes! We helped <laughs> liberate him! Heck we did. yes! We have a part in his life story. That makes me proud uh -huh. as heck. That's amazing. That makes me so proud. And that's hilarious. Quit trying to escape or we're going to take your legs from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I was the bad guy, I wouldn't have let him have them exactly. for that reason. I mean, it's war and that's what you do. But this guy is awesome. Thank you for telling us. Like, mm -hmm. seriously. And if you didn't know his story, I don't know what to tell you. This is awesome. Yeah. Smash that like button for this guy. You know, seriously, exactly. let's push this out to YouTube so more people know about him. And then again, if they do, great, great. but there's plenty that don't. I uh -huh. can promise you that. Oh, this is epic. It was believed to be escape proof. He would remain here until it was liberated on April 15th of 1945 yeah. by the first United States Army. Once Bada returned to Britain, he eventually retired on July 21st, 1946, with the rank of group captain. For the rest of his life, he would campaign for people with disabilities and shared awesome. his own story to prove that a disability did not mean the end. Amen, a biography called Reach for the oh, Sky cool. was released mm. in 1954 with great success and would later go on to be a film. In Good June enough. of 1976, Bada was knighted for his services to disabled yes. people at the nice. Queen's Birthday Honors that year. Fantastic. Over the course of his life, he had a total of 5,744 hours of recorded flight time. Whoa. Douglas Bada's legacy as a pilot is only outshined by the work and advocation he did for disabled people everywhere, yeah. which wow. is still honored to this day. Wow. Instead of promoting my Patreon like I normally would here, I'm going to be asking you guys to support the Douglas Botter Foundation, which is a charity set up by his family to help people with disabilities just like his. There will be a link down below in the description if you want to check that out. That's amazing. Wow! Okay, and as the gentleman who made the video, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put a link in this video yes. for the Douglas Botter Foundation if anyone would like to donate. Um, that is amazing. What an incredible human being. I know the tenacity he had to just keep going. Like yes. you weren't taking him down at no, all. No, and thankfully that's not what happened. I'm so thankful to hear that. Um, but yeah, we'll have a link in the in the description of this video. So if anyone wants to go to the foundation and check it out, please do. Um, oh, wow, just so well. Uh, if you guys like this, again, smash that like button. This is just an amazing. I love learning about people I would not have otherwise known about. Mm -hmm. exactly. and, and there's so many people within World War II, World War I, all, you know. Throughout history. They, I mean, yeah, and, and unless you really get in there and dive in, you, mm -hmm. you may not know, it, it, and that depends where you live. Yep. It depends on a lot of different factors. But I, again, wanted to say thank you to our friends over on Facebook for suggesting and putting his name on the list of people mm -hmm. for us to check out. And I'm thankful that we, we grabbed it and found a video. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great learning stories like this and keeping the story alive, yes. keeping what he did and his impact on history is so important, not only for the war, but also, as I were saying, for disabled people and everything that he's done. Absolutely. And just showing that, that you know, just because something I said earlier, you know, I'm not a person that does mm -hmm. well with things going badly and I've never had anything that bad happen, but... Um, 
Yeah, he's showing you that's not the end. You can you can do better. You can push on. You can push forward. And someone like that is a hero, you know, yeah. despite anything else he's done in his life. So, yeah. so happy to have to have known this man and want to look more into him uh, for sure. I want to check that movie out if it's any any good. Yeah, um, definitely his book for sure. But what an incredible human being! What an incredible um, you know pilot! Mm -hmm. um, just I, there's not enough words. It just I'm smiling because. It just like kept getting more and crazy. I know. More insane. And then he just kept, he keeps sitting the bar. I mean, exactly. Come on. He had to have been such an amazing person to be around because, like, you know, the beginning, it was, you know, I, I can get through this horrible problem in my life, this horrible mm -hmm. issue that happened to me. And then, you know, I'm in the, with the Canadians. They're just destroyed. Now I've lifted them all up. And yep. now I'm, I'm captured by the Germans and they like me so much that they'll let me keep escaping and won't take my legs. And they even <laughs> brought me another leg. Like, that's insane. Exactly. How cool. I mean, an amazing hum human being. And I'm so glad we got to learn his story. Yeah, a little bit of it anyway, right? I'm sure exactly. there's plenty more to it. And if there's anything, anyone else that you can think of in history that you'd like us to check out on our channel, please put it in the comments below. Yes. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hope that you guys enjoyed this because I thought this was one of the coolest things we've ever watched and learned about. What an amazing, amazing gentleman. Absolutely incredible. Thanks for watching with us, guys. We'll see you next time. Until then. Love like Jess. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye. Bye.